and welcome to the Word of Truth, the Sunday School Class of the Air with your teacher, Rod Payne. The Word of Truth. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, whatever time of the day that you're watching this program over the many times it plays here on CFNT. Thank you for joining us in what has continued to be a tumultuous November. If you would have told me two years ago, even at this time, that we'd be looking at the uh, tumultuous is the best word to describe it. Uh, the uh, events of the last few weeks, the events of this month, heavens, the events of 2020. I would have wondered. Um, I saw a hilarious um, internet post the other day uh, from a gentleman. It showed some of those uh, midnight, or not midnight, nighttime sleeping uh, pills that sometimes folks use. And they're supposed to have melatonin and some chamomile and, and not supposed to be uh, narcotic in nature and not supposed to be habit forming. But someone had cleverly redesigned the packaging of the box and it was called hibernation. And that you apparently you could take one at the beginning of a year and not wake up until that year had passed. I don't wanna see a show of hands for those of you who are watching the program today, but I know there are a lot of people that perhaps wish that something like that existed. But what we know is this, who does exist, who is in control, who will continue to be in control, is God through His Son Jesus Christ and the ministry of His Holy Spirit to the body of Christ. So. I know, I know that things look, um, the best way to describe it is chaotic, uh, tumultuous, uh, again, comes to mind. I know that, but I need you to remain fixed and focused on Jesus. Today, when we look at this latter part of, of this book, we, we're finding in Isaiah now, God has basically said, um, and he's using this prophet to speak to us all the way down through the centuries today, I need you to get a grip. I need you to get a hand on some of the things that are going on. Here are the things that are beneficial. Here are the things that are disastrous. Before I do, uh, before I get into rather today's lesson today, let me wish those of you who are celebrating a birthday near the end of the month of November. This program plays sometimes around, sometime around the 22nd of November. So as you're going into the Thanksgiving week, and you have a birthday, let me say to you, happy, happy birthday. If you're celebrating an anniversary of any kind, happy anniversary to you as well. I had a kind soul the other day uh, stop me at the earlier part of this month when we were having that day of prayer at the downtown campus for First Baptist Church, and a kind person stopped me and she said, I watch the program every week, and I want you to know I had a birthday, and I believe she told me it was in October, and she said, you did say happy birthday, but you didn't say it directly to me. We stopped doing that practice at the begin of, beginning of 2020, and uh, I just want to say to all of you who watch this program, thank you so very, very much for watching the program, for praying, not only for me, but for all the folks who are making this possible, the folks behind the scenes, the camera operator, the switcher, the sound person, all those folks, they do this because we want you, we do this collectively because we want you to have a Bible study that you can attend regardless of what's going on in the outside world. And I know for some of you, you continue not to uh, go to your life group or Sunday school class, as many call it, in person. That's okay. I hope that our time together, while it can never really uh, replace the fellowship that we experience when we're in a body of Christ together, I hope that this helps. And I really, really sincerely do. And I've been told by a number of folks through folks who are kind enough to write, others who have stopped me. Uh, uh, you know, everyone is wearing a mask today. So I wonder sometimes, you know, how someone knows who I am. Uh, but it could be my bald head that gives it away. I don't know for sure. But in any respect, thank you for the kind uh, phone calls and letters and other things that folks have said about the program and about the ministry here. We greatly, greatly, and I'm speaking not in the royal sense, I'm speaking collectively for everybody involved in the Word of Truth. We greatly, greatly appreciate it, and we appreciate your prayers so very, very much. Well, again, chaos reigning, uh, seemingly supreme, but not. God in control. God is in control. 
And in the time that Isaiah writes this passage, we're going to be camping out in chapter 58 today of the book. At the time when Isaiah writes this, there is a great uh, discord between God and his people. And by the way, body of Christ, anytime there is discord between God and his people, we need to always look intro. We need, we, we need to look intro ourselves. okay? We need to be um, introspective, I guess would be the best word, because it's not God that's causing the disconnect ever. It's us. As this passage of Scripture reflects, oft times people believe that just through rote recitation or through repetition of something that they learned in a, in a spiritual sense or something that they learned in a religious sense, they believe that through rote repetition of that, through just doing it over and over and over or making sure that they dot all the I's and cross all the T's, that somehow or another the relationship with God is established through that repetition, but it's not. And as a nation, we are seeing now, and we will continue, I'm not a prophet nor the son of one, but we will continue to see the fruit of, of um, sin, certainly. We'll continue to see the f fruit of, uh, of um, ego. We'll continue to see the fruit of um, not heeding wise, godly counsel. We're going to continue to see this fruit until we do the things that are right. And I'm not saying everyone who watches this program is not endeavoring to do so or doing so. But collectively, a nation that has enacted some of the laws and statutes that we have enacted over the last half of a century, certainly, uh, a nation that continues to allow uh, the kind of rampant sin that goes by and, and is, is condoned quite often at the highest realms of lawmaking, uh, a nation that in, engages in these kind of things cannot hope, cannot expect not to have some form of consequence. It's remarkable how God uses His Word to talk to us in the day and age where we reside, written all these many years ago, but still relevant, and as the Word speaks about itself, and sharper than any two-edged sword. Turn to Isaiah chapter 58, and we'll begin with verse 1. Shout it aloud. Do not hold back. Raise your voice like a trumpet. If there's any doubt that this person is going to try to be politically correct, if there's any doubt that this person is going to try not to hurt everyone's feelings or anyone's uh, tender heart, no, no, no. It is now time. It has been time. But it is certainly time in chapter 58 for a clarion call to be issued from God. And that call is going to say, here's what's wrong and here's how you make it right. Raise your voice like a trumpet. Declare to my people their rebellion and to the house of Jacob their sin. Verse 2, for day after day they seek me out. They seem eager to know my ways as if there were a, they were a nation that does what is right and has not forsaken the commands of God. They ask me for just decisions and seem eager for God to come near them. They ask God for just decisions and seem eager. He's speaking about himself, by the way, now in the third person. And seem eager for God to come near them. How often have we cried out to God? How often do we continue to do so? I, sinners of whom I am chief. I do not have a finger to point towards that uh, camera uh, lens today or through that television screen. I do not. How often have I cried out to God in the middle of my sin because of the consequences of saying? Isaiah says, listen, you need to hear. Everybody seems to be lining up as we heard uh, following November 3rd and in the weeks to follow, both sides reading or quoting, sometimes misquoting, but quoting the Word of God, calling upon Him in prayer, and God bless the United States of America. All these things, body of Christ, there couldn't be a more appropriate passage of Scripture for us to look at during this time that we're going through right now, collectively as a nation, certainly, but as a world, most assuredly, because the pandemic and all of the associated issues related to it 
Don't think that any of this, and we've talked about this before, none of this caught God by surprise. He didn't wake up one morning and say, oh my. No, it doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. He is speaking through Isaiah, and I believe, I know he's speaking to me. If he's speaking to you, receive it. If he's not, praise God. Chapter 58, verse 4 goes like this. No, verse 3. Why have we fasted, they say, and you've not seen it? Why have we humbled ourselves, and yet you've not noticed? Yet on the day of your fasting you do as you please and exploit all your workers. Why have we done the religious, quote-unquote, things, the rites, that have been associated with Christendom all this time, but God, seemingly, you're not hearing us? He says, but on the very day that we're fasting, now I'm not going to say you, I'm going to say we're, okay? I want to be included in this because I need to hear this, and I've needed to hear this every time I've studied this lesson. Every time we're going into that fast, he says, we're still mistreating people around us. We're still not caring. He's going to go into some, to, to some specifics here in a moment, but we're not helping those who are in need. We're instead so concerned about ourselves. I remember Early on in 2020, in March, April time frame, we began to call through our list of the widows associated with First Baptist Church. And I hope that if you don't attend this congregation or if you're not aligned with this congregation, that your church has something similar. And if not, uh, write us and let us pray for you. But we began to call and we were asking basically, do you have everything you need? And uh, on those occasions, I've only gotten to see my father uh, once, but on those occasions um, when I got to see my mom and or my dad, um, I always had extra paper towels and toilet paper in the back of the whatever vehicle I was driving so I could say, do you have any need of paper goods? Well, we saw what happened early on in the pandemic. People who had the wherewithal, that means they were mobile and they had currency or they had a credit card, people who had the wherewithal were going to store shelves and they were completely emptying them because they were concerned more about themselves. Now these might have been, and I'm not saying that they were because I didn't know who did this, but these might have been the same folks who were saying, let's pray that God will release us from this pandemic. In the meantime, they were hoarding for themselves. They were making sure that they and theirs were taken care of while not seemingly giving a hoot about anybody else. God says, on the very days that you fast, you're really mistreating other people. Verse 4, your fasting ends in quarreling and strife and in striking each other with wicked fists. You can't fast as you do today and expect your voice to be heard on high. Your quarterly makes a great point here. Perhaps their fasting was leading them to being angry because they were hungry. There are, as your quarterly also correctly points out, basically three kinds of fasts that are uh, illuminated for us, if you will, in God's Word. There is a, a partial fast uh, for a period of time. There is an abstinence of, of food and water, a very severe fast on the other end of the spectrum, uh, generally for about a three-day period. And then there is a fast from solid food or a fast from food, and that might last longer as you sought God. I remember once, many, many years ago, early in my walk with Christ, and I was really seeking um, a deeper knowledge of the Holy Spirit in my life. I have to be very, very careful how I uh, navigate the words here, which I just said a minute ago, God certainly not doing in this passage in 58th chapter of Isaiah, but I have to be very, very careful because I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings or anything, but I was seeking a deeper relationship with the Holy Spirit. And I really wanted to have that uh, experience of knowing that He was just all over me. And I fasted for a while and um, I went to a men's prayer meeting at a non-denominational non church outside of Aid, Oklahoma, where Vicki and I were residing at the time. And man, I heard God's voice. I'm telling you right now, it, if it wasn't audible to everybody else in the room, which I don't know, I know this, it was audible to me. Now, it was not a, um, an experience where I levitated or uh, you know uh, anything of this nature, but I did feel the presence of God. And I do know the benefit that comes from denying myself so that I can more fully concentrate on my relationship with my Heavenly Father. Through the prophet Isaiah, though, God is saying today, you can't expect to act like you act Monday through Saturday and then suddenly have some miraculous switch that gets turned on on Sunday. 
I've probably made this illustration a number of times on this program, but years ago I used to catch the, the old Buck Owens program or Porter Wagner with Dolly Parton pulling the, the uh, almost a doily out of a box of breeze saying you get a full bath towel in every box of breeze or whatever. But it was the practice for many of these programs, uh, syndicated country and western programs, um, that they would have right before the last song generally uh, a uh, cut out of a, like a stained glass window or some, some prop man had it on a string back there in the back and he would release the string or release the pulley and that thing would drop down onto the set and they'd say now we're going to sing one for the man upstairs like you know okay and the rest of the a half hour had been about uh, going into bars and meeting some strange woman or getting so drunk you couldn't remember the strange woman that you were with the night before or whatever but now here's one for the man upstairs and I'm not trying to cast any dispersions against Mr. Wagner or Mr. Owens or any of the people in that genre but nevertheless that was the practice and then one more song and uh uh, let's have one for the uh, one for me and one more for the road or whatever. We can't live like that, body of Christ. It's got to be a seven day a week, 24 hours a day, 365 day a year relationship. God seeks to have a personal relationship with us where He can course correct us, and man, trust me when I tell you, He has to do that to me all the time where He can inspire us, where He can illuminate us, where He can give us the need or, or the understanding through the Holy Spirit ministry to read His Word and grasp it. He's looking for an all-the-time relationship, not just uh, on occasion when I need Him or when I feel like I probably ought to plug back in. He's looking for an all-the-time. Your fasting, he says, ends in quarreling and strife. You can't fast as you do today and expect your voice to be heard on high. We can't and expect our voices to be heard on high. Is this the kind of fast, verse 5, I have chosen only a day for a man to humble himself? Is it only bowing one's head like a reed and lying on sackcloth and ashes? Is that what you call a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? He asks these questions with his tongue firmly, well, I don't believe that God has a tongue, but the tongue is firmly planted, planted in the cheek here, okay? These are rhetorical questions. He is not expecting an answer. He is expecting acquiescence. He is expecting surrender. He is expecting heartfelt acknowledgement, heartfelt repentance. Can we do those things and expect that he's going to hear us? Verse 6, is this not the kind of fasting I have chosen? He says, so let me contrast for us. Let, let me contrast for you, he says, the difference between what's been going on, paying lip service, if you will, to my relationship with God. Let's contrast that with what God is expecting for us. Is this not, the, verse 6, the kind of fasting I have chosen? To loose the chains of injustice. Body of Christ. There are so many injustices being done, and I know, I know that many, many folks watching this program uh, feel there's a grave injustice uh, that has been done or is being redressed or has been redressed. I totally understand that. But there are many, many other injustices. At the first of this month of November, we commemorated along with believers around the world the day of prayer, the international day of prayer for the persecuted church. There are injustices being done in the name of governments around this globe and they persecute those who have a faith in Jesus Christ. They put them in prison, they beat them, they confiscate their property, they separate wives from husbands, they do all manner of things to say your faith should be punished because it is not the belief of the state. And we do business with some of these company, or countries rather. Uh, listen, listen, body of Christ. Doesn't matter which side of the aisle you sit on or which side of the aisle you voted for. Our nation often does business with countries who persecute Christians until we're ready to say, I'll pay more for, and you plug in the line. Okay? I'll pay more for appliances. I'll pay more for entertainment uh, devices. I'll pay more for clothing. I'll pay more. Until we're willing to do that, we're going to continue as a nation to do business. The guy who's running the camera here has worked many times in foreign countries where a person is not even allowed to carry his Bible outside. He must make sure that that Bible stays reposited wherever he's billeted. 
And he doesn't have that freedom in that nation. In this country, on the other hand, a, a person of the Islamic faith can carry the Quran right, right into the coffee shop if they desire. And they can actively engage in the public square in any form of discussion or debate, if you will. But there are Islamic nations around the world where Christians cannot f carry the Word of God and certainly cannot espouse their faith in a public forum for fear of not just reprisal or retribution, but for fear of martyrdom. But we continue to do business with these folks. He says, the kind of fasting I've chosen is to loose the chains of injustice right now as you and I are sharing this time of Bible study together, there are women and children, and yes, these include young men, who are being trafficked, sexually trafficked, in this nation, the United States of America. And in fact, I need to bring the case closer to home. It's happening right here in Wichita Falls and right here in this area of North Texas. And we turn the other way and we say, well, surely not here in Mayberry, but it is. And drug addiction is rampant throughout this area. Body of Christ, it not just, it's not just a pandemic. That is, not, that is just one part of an illness that is gripping this world. He says, the kind of fasting I'm looking for is to loose the chains of injustice, to untie the cords of the yoke, to set the oppressed free and break every yoke. To set the oppressed free. Years ago in our nation, the Emancipation Proclamation set free, gave citizenship to some degree rights to persons of any ethnicity, specifically with the Emancipation Proclamation, the freeing of the slave population in this country, brought here against their will, conscripted to do the work of the, of the plantations and the farms and the menial manual labor of, of so many people. But that's not the only form of slavery that exists today. As I mentioned trafficking earlier, that's another form of slavery that exists today. But there are many other forms. Migrant farm workers who work for pennies in order to bring home the crops that you and I enjoy when we drink the orange juice. or when we, And you're saying, well, not the brand I buy. Well, praise God for that. Okay, praise God for that. But nevertheless, God is looking for a people who don't just give lip service, but He's looking for me, He's looking for us collectively as the body of Christ to say, I'm willing to see what I can do personally to see the yoke removed. And He uses that word yoke twice in this passage of Scripture. He says in verse 9, untie the cords of the yoke, and then the back half of verse, uh, I'm sorry, verse 6, untie the cords of the yoke, back half of verse 6, break every yoke. We need to be about the business of our Father. He, say, he came to seek and save those who were lost. It is for freedom He has set us free. That's what the Word says. It is for freedom that He has set us free. How are we, as the body of Christ, engaged in that freedom? Is it not to share your food with the hungry and to provide the poor wanderer with shelter? When you see the naked, to clothe him and do not turn away from your own flesh and blood? One of the great sadnesses in our country today is the fact that so many who are in nursing homes because of the pandemic could not be visited, cannot be visited by family members. And it is uh, strangers, albeit kind-hearted and uh, trained staff, but strangers nevertheless, who are often caring for our loved ones, we can't turn our back. We cannot turn our back. And I have loved to see, um, I had a dear friend that was in the hospital back in October, and uh, his wife said, call him on his cell phone. He keeps it in the, in the room, and you'll go to this window. And the outside of this medical facility had marked the windows, the ground floor windows, with the room numbers, so that through the glass, <laughs> my buddy Waylon and I could communicate. Praise God for that. We need to be sharing our food with the hungry. Boy, around this time of the year, especially as we've been collecting cans by the car, uh, started at the first of uh, first of November, last part of October. But it's it's a year-round thing for folks like the Faith Mission, who feed those who are in great need, clothing those who are in great need as well. Then 
your light will break forth like the dawn, verse 8 says. There's a promise. When we're engaged in the kind of fasting, as he mentioned in the earlier verse, that God is speaking about, when we're engaged in that kind of fasting, our light breaks forth like the dawn, the NIV translation says, and your healing will quickly appear. Now, I am not suggesting, nor, does I, nor do I believe the Word of God says this, that you do this and then you expect your wish to be granted. This is not genie in the lamp rubbing it at the back of Aladdin's cave. No, but I do believe that God says for every action of our part, there is a recompense for that action. And I do believe that God's Word clearly states, clearly teaches that if you do so and so, you should expect what you reap, the Word says this, not me, the Word, what we reap, we'll sow. Then your righteousness will go before you and the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. Then you will call and the Lord will answer. You will cry for help and He will say, here I am. They said, who should we say is sending us? Who, who should we say, we're trying to bring this prophetic word, who should we say sent us? And he said, tell them I am. Here he says, here I am. If you do away with the yoke of the oppression, with the pointing of the finger and the malicious talk, and if you spend yourselves on behalf of the hungry and satisfy the needs of the oppressed, then your light will rise in the darkness and your night will become like noonday. I tell so many people that I speak with during this time, look beyond your own fear, your own sorrow, your own sadness, your own situations, circumstances. Look beyond those things and ask how you can be a blessing to others. We used to sing the great old hymns of the faith and one of them was, is your life a channel of blessing? And the, the chorus would say, make me a channel of blessing today. Make me a channel of blessing, I pray. That's what God is speaking through this word, through the 58th chapter of Isaiah. On the 22nd or whenever you're watching this of November in the year 2020, be a channel of blessing. Verse 10, if you spend yourselves on behalf of the hungry, satisfy, satisfy the needs of the oppressed, your light will rise in the darkness. The Lord will guide you always. He'll satisfy your needs in a sun-scorched land. Didn't he rescue us from a drought a few years? Yes, he did. In a miraculous deluge of a way? Yes, he did. Verse 12, your people will rebuild the ancient ruins and will raise up the age-old foundations. You will be called the repairer of broken walls, the restorer of streets with dwellings. Body of Christ, we need to have some walls repaired. Oh, can I get a witness from anybody watching this program today? As a world, we need, as certainly as a nation, we need to have some walls repaired. We need to have some broken people repaired. Thanks for watching the program. As always, we would love to hear from you. I didn't mention this at the beginning, but if you'd like to, you may write to us at The Word of Truth, 1209th Street, Wichita Falls, Texas. Our zip code is 76301. Still near the end of November, so it's not too late to send us a Christmas card. Again, that's the Word of Truth, 1209th Street, Wichita Falls, Texas. Our zip code is 76301. Well, right after Thanksgiving, or if you watch it on Thursday, Thanksgiving, we're going to wrap up the book of Isaiah before we begin our next study. So I hope that you'll take some time over the Thanksgiving weekend or the early part of the next week and join us right here. I'd love to see you here on the Word of Truth. See you then. You've been watching The Word of Truth from First Baptist Church, Wichita Falls. Join us again next week for The Word of Truth.